Hello again, everybody. I'm Roger Hoover. Glad to welcome you back to the Crimson Tide Sports Network, and it's time for Alabama Legends. It's proudly presented by the Paul W. Bryant Museum. Make sure you visit them on campus your next time in Tuscaloosa. We always like taking a look back at Alabama football history related to the opponent that Alabama has for this week, and this week we're stepping back to the year 2008, and we're going down to Baton Rouge. John Parker Wilson was the quarterback for the Crimson Tide in 2008, and he had a very memorable game against the Tigers in 08, and John Parker joins us now. What's going on? Roll Tide. Roll Tide, Roger. Yeah, always uh, great to join you, but even better to join you when we're talking about a, a great game like that back in 2008. Just right off the bat, is that one of your favorite games of all time in your career? Yeah, no question. There was a few that 2008 season where we were getting everything going. Um, Georgia, when we went on the road to the blackout, um, you know, the Clemson game to start off that season where we really didn't know what kind of team we had was great. The Auburn game that we had the iron ball last week where we kind of, uh, broke the streak for them. But this LSU game in 2008 was, was probably the biggest because at this point, everything was on the line. The winner was going to go play in Atlanta for the SEC championship. LSU had a great team. We were going on the road for Coach Saban's first trip back down to Baton Rouge since leaving the LSU Tigers. So there was a lot of uh, fun storylines before. And then to win in overtime on the road, um, it really doesn't get much better than that. Certainly does it. And it's one of the few times that a Coach Saban pregame speech ever really made it outside the locker room. I'm not sure who was filming it or how it started to circulate around, but it's one of the best pregame speeches I've ever heard in all of sports. Just how did you guys feel hearing that and hearing him get so animated and fired up before the game? Yeah, pretty. whoever, whoever was the, film, film, uh, the videographer on that one needs a raise for, <laughs> for letting it get out because it's, it's great. Uh, it's you know still something that I listen to that I know a bunch of Alabama fans do. But, you know, I think um, that game, it was just for, – and for the bigger games, you know, he doesn't really need to get the guys up. You, you, you're, you're internally motivated um, being, being an SEC game, being a, being a division game, and being, like I said, everything on the line. You get fired up. But I think when he he's down there too and he can just kind of he has such a good feel of the team and and he got going and and by the time you know there's not a lot of a lot of instances where you you feel like you're going to run through the wall and you want to just like break down the doors to get out of the locker room and go to the field but that was one of those situations and i think it played perfect because we got out to a good start um and and they were such a good team where we had to and it was it was fun and looking back on those times you know the locker room and his pregame and halftime speeches are, are, are great memories. Yeah, certainly one of the best before that ball game. And then you mentioned got off to a good start, and you ended up scoring the first touchdown on a one-yard sneak. And then said hello to the LSU student section, gave the call me. Uh, let's go through the entire story of first how your phone number got out and what led to that celebration. Great question on how my phone number got, got out. I definitely didn't didn't give it to uh, anybody down in Baton Rouge. So somebody got it, leaked it out on the message boards, and it quickly became uh, a popular post, I guess, because, you know, during the week, I think it was a Tuesday or Wednesday, where my phone starts just going crazy from these numbers I didn't recognize. And I didn't put it together initially. Just I think I was in class, so I threw my phone in my bag. <laughs> By the time, you know, you looked back, there's – thousands of calls, thousands of text messages where my phone literally froze up. So I, I kind of figured out what was going on then. It wasn't planned. I, it was it was something my brother Ross was kind of agging me on during the week, like, you got to do it. It was a, a couple other players in the SEC did it earlier that year where they you kind of put up the phone to the student section like, hey, I know y'all are calling me. I'm calling you back. Um, <laughs> But, you know, first first touchdown, I just happened, I, I swear, it was just happened to be right there in front of the student section. I look up, they're looking at me, and I just, I, I had to do it. So the unfortunate thing was the 15-yard penalty. It would have been great. It would have gone off much smoother if we didn't get a penalty. Then we kick off from our, what, 20-yard line. So they get the ball at the 50 and score like two plays later. So the touchdown was off or not, but it only works out. It's only a good story because we won the game. Certainly is. is that really worth a penalty though? I mean, all you did was put up a fake cell phone. I mean, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I completely agree. However, um, I saw the video. I think it was a couple of years ago. I, I mean, you know, one of these um, uh, pregame montages before the game comes on. I did draw it out pretty pretty long. I think if I would have done it in a couple seconds, it would have gone. But I 
I drew it out. I was in the moment. And the next thing you know, there's a flag fall on the ground. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's not something I advise to any player currently on the team. If there's anything that, that makes Coach Saban more mad, it's those uh, penalties that are, are completely can be avoided. That, that's one that can be avoided. Yeah, I'm certainly he was. I'm certain he was fired up about that. But uh, the entire team, uh, again, had a good start to the ball game, as you mentioned. The defense made a lot of good plays, and I'm going to be talking to Rashad coming up on Saturday about all the interceptions he had. Three interceptions for our CTSN teammate. That was one of his best games. Yeah, he was. He was one of the best receivers that the LSU quarterback had all day. <laughs> he was all over the place, flying around. Uh, two big ones, but none of them bigger than the interception in overtime. So they get the ball first. Uh, I think it might have been the first play of overtime. He goes back, picks it off in the back of the end zone, and then we get the ball, and all we got to do is score to win the game. So Rashad flying all over the place like he always does. But, man, just, you know, that's what you got to do, though. And that's what, you know, our, our players have done all season is when you need the big players to step up and be there, he was there. And that's what it was all about. We had some good uh, guys on offense with Antoine Caldwell. Julio caught a bunch of balls that day. Uh, but what a fun, fun place to go on the road and play. And there's, I think there's nothing more fun for, for a player than being at Bryant Denny Stadium. But going on the road and being able to just look up and there's 100,000 people that are just dead quiet, maybe except our few thousand that made the trip, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty special. Yeah, tell me about overtime because you were able to hit Julio and he nearly had the game winner right there, just went out of bounds and then you were able to punch it in. Yeah, another situation where... Okay, we, we got a field goal blocked in regulation, which would have won the game also. Um, so it's like, hey, let's get down there as close as we can. Why not find Julio? I mean, find the best player. He's one-on-one. -on -one. We ran a slant and go. We called a sluggo. So he gets a little inside move and then runs down the sidelines. Great coverage. So I just threw a back shoulder throw. He goes up and makes an acrobatic catch to catch it. So now we're inside of one. And one of our most successful play calls of the entire season was the quarterback sneak. We weren't, I think we were stopped one time all year on like third and short, fourth and short, or, you know, goal to go, sneak it in. We had uh, Antoine Caldwell, like I said, at, at offensive center. So it was literally just follow right behind him. The rest, he, you know, the rest is pretty simple. Follow the big guys into the promised land. And no penalties after that touchdown for you as Alabama got to have a big-time celebration like you mentioned. That some of the band was there, the fans were there. Uh, you guys really lived it up after that because that was such a good milestone for this program in year two of the Saban era. Just another sign that everything was trending Alabama's way. Yeah, you know, the year before 2007, we lost these close games. We, we, we didn't lose by more than a touchdown the whole season. Um, in 2008, we learned how to put it together. We learned how to take that step where – um, you got to learn how to win the tight games, the close games, the ones against Georgia. When you, when you get up, you got to finish out how to put them away. Come back against LSU. Um, it's, it was just it, it was part of the process, part of the road to get where we're at now. And uh, we had a lot of good guys doing it, a lot of good leaders on that team, a lot of, a lot of good senior leaders, fifth-year fifth year guys, a ton of good freshmen that came in and obviously carried the torch to where we are today. But um, it all starts with Coach Saban. You know, that was a big turning point. And our, and our season was going down there on the road and saying, uh, there's a new sheriff in town. Certainly was. And since then, a lot of success and a lot of good trips for the Crimson Tide to Death Valley. And you got to be excited for what's coming up Saturday. Even though it won't be a full stadium, it will be a little different. It's still Alabama LSU. Yeah, and it's, it's nighttime down there. The, the fans that are there will be rowdy. And the players, look, this, is, this has become a rival force the LSU game and we'd always talk about Auburn and, and Tennessee but LSU's right there because generally like like I said earlier this this is depending on who's going to go play in the SEC championship they're they're down this year they've they've had some issues but um you go down there and you try to send a message for the current players on the team for the players down there in high school in the state looking at where they want to go to college this is a big game and and just I think with where we're at in our season, okay, we play our biggest game of the year, the Iron Bowl. Now we got two games left, and then the SEC championship. So you're kind of setting your your mental emotions on how you're going to finish the season because it's look, this has been a long season already. There's still a lot of season left. So as a player, it's just you got to get in your routine of doesn't matter who we're playing and where we're playing. Heck, this game might be bumped back to Sunday or Monday. Nobody knows. You just got to get up ready to play, and uh, every day could be different, but 
the teams that are going to be able to finish the season and win the championship and win it all is going to be the most mentally strong. Because right now, your team is what it is. Your identity is what it is. You just got to go out there and execute and play ball. Well, the Crimson Tide have been doing that. We hope that continues coming up Saturday against LSU. But, John Parker, this was a lot of fun to kind of look back to the 2008 win. A great memory for you and for all Alabama fans. Just thank you for your time, and we'll see you on Saturday down at Death Valley. Can't wait. Roll Tide, Roger. All right, Roll Tide to John Parker Wilson. Thank you for watching the Crimson Tide Sports Network.